I write my poetry. That's that's pretty much it. You know, it, it gets me by. Um, I don't make a huge amount of money. I'd struggle to sustain things like rent. Um, at this present moment, at least. But I don't need those things to support this lifestyle. I just need to get myself to the next town. Again, it comes back to that question, how much money do you need once you offload all of your bills? I think people often do kind of get that perception, particularly in the UK, because they just see somebody with a local accent with a bag. Well, he must be homeless, unfortunate, or something. It's not necessarily the case. If I was maybe talking an Australian accent, they'd probably understand I was travelling that much more quickly, because of course it, it's sort of like a one of those sounds that reminds us that someone's actually not local. Uh, with a local accent, it, it, it's they see so much homelessness on the streets, it's very easy for people to make that jump, which may be an assumption, but I suppose it's an understandable one given they're bombarded with these images by their own experience every day. There's been times I've got a bit tired of the road, traveling, wandering, and I've just tested myself, move into a place for a few months in the colder months. See how it goes, but by the end of it, oh, I've always got itchy feet again. It could be a job in London, it could be a house in Swindon. It makes no odds. After a few weeks, the feet are itching again. The space underneath my shoulder straps is, is starting to get a little bit, I don't know, itchy in its own way. First class is at the rear, standard class is at the middle and front, bicycle spaces are at the very front. I think my mother would, would like me to have been a banker or a soldier. Um, I don't know, maybe live a bit more of a normal sort of conventional life, but she respects my choices. Um, I think she's slowly getting used to them. You've got to get beyond the economic hurdles, you've got to skip the social hurdles, and the social hurdles are the biggest. Mm. The economic and the social hurdles, they really, really hold you back. When I went into interviews and opened my gob, they, uh, they, saw it, they, they heard, heard a counsellor yeah, statement. Yeah, yeah. A friend of mine who, who got an internship at, at, admittedly, a prestigious private school, had his teacher come up to him one day and say, dear boy, dear boy, we're, we're going to have to do something about that, that accent of oh, yours. Wow. You're, you're never going to be a, a doctor or a lawyer uh, speaking, speaking like that. Tongue, <laughs> that what are you going to do? <laughs> oh. I'm on the sixth year of travelling. I've been travelling for a number of years by that point. It, it's, I don't know, it, it is a strange life at the best of times. I spent an entire winter at one point in rural Leicestershire and it was sort of like you can't hide from yourself when, that, when, when the nights are long and cold, the sun goes down four o'clock in the afternoon and, and you're left with nothing but the cold and, and yourself for the rest of the night not just one night, but every night for that winter. And, and strange things pop up 
as it were, a sort of, I don't know, just arise from nowhere and, and face your own personal demons in many ways, or I suppose I did. I like to keep some clothes away from the fire. It's ideal to have a set of clothes that you keep for the evenings and, and, and just sitting by the fire and doing generally dirty tasks like collecting wood, stuff like that. Because uh, otherwise, you better clothes which, which, which you're wearing when you're interacting with humans in, in the city space. Uh, out of those clothes sort of stay in good condition and, and it's less easy for people to judge you. They like to judge people with big bags. I remember at the end of the spring, after the winter and the spring, it was as the spring was turning to, to summer, I went to, to the gathering where, where the seed was planted, as it were, the arts and poetry and, and everything. And at that point I was just craving a bit of human contact because I'd just spent this entire winter on my own, which was amazing, but... but You've got to know when you're pushing your own limits as well. And, and at that point, I definitely was pushing a few psychological limits. Um, a winter and a spring, I'm going to say completely on my own, but really with very, very limited human contact. And you're talking, when I say very limited, you're, you're talking maybe two hours out of a week. That's a lot of time alone, you know. I think prisoners get more human contact than I had that winter and that spring. Trying to wake up from a dream It's harder than it seems Birds are flying low My dad, oh no, I don't really talk to him these days, but he was always quite supportive of the lifestyle. He's very much of the same mind frame in me, where in, in the sense that, that he believes in, in, in living the richest of life experience as possible, you know. What we do for a living isn't always what we do to make our life an interesting experience. Extended family? I don't know, they've perhaps been hoodwinked by some of the things in the local press. The controversy over whether I should be allowed to write my poetry on the pavement. I'd be allowed to write it at all. Some people would say oh, I shouldn't be allowed to write my poetry at all, even though it's not particularly offensive. It's just observations about nature and such like. I was sat by a fire at a hippie gathering friend of mine, he had the talking stick. We, 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 we sit in a talking circle. We pass the stick around to the left 
Um, if you've got the stick, you've got the word. If you've not got the stick, shut up and listen, basically. Uh, it was his turn with the stick, so I'm sat there listening. And he said, I've been lighting fires with chalk and just passed the stick on. And I sat there confused, but I can't say anything until the stick gets to me, so the stick gets to me. And I find myself asking, I say, I, say, I like fire. Lit a lot of fires, but, but I ain't never lit no fire with no chalk. Do you mind letting me in on the secret? Pass the stick to the left, it's gone around the circle in silence till it got back to my friend. And he said, I've been lighting fires with chalk by, by writing inspirational quotes on the floor and lighting fires in, the, in their hearts. It was a bit of a hint at the time never tells a person to do something he just throws the seed out there if it's in fertile soil it'll grow so that was just just this way of, of, of hinting it seems at the poetry at least that's what grew from that seed i found myself must have been what two three weeks later now on the pavements of swindon writing the poems on the pavement for the first time and uh, went from there to bath from Bath to, to Cardiff, from Cardiff to Swansea, and the rest is history. The poet casts his rhyming spell as demons gather down in hell. As angels circle round your door, the poet tells of what's in store. For humans who will dare to dream as chalk it scratches rainbow scenes and casts a spell which cuts so deep where angels sing and demons creep. The poet tells of his own... Local authorities would sometimes prefer that I didn't write my, my, my poetry on the pavement. Um, by and large, they're okay. Uh, they insist for a little bit and they, they just give up because the police have got better things to do and, and are very clear we're, we're not about to arrest the guy for writing poetry. It's not what British policing is, is liked to do traditionally. Um, so at that point, normally they give up. Swindon, my hometown, was a completely different story. They persisted and persisted for years before they finally gave up and made me look very, very bad in the process. Even though I was using washable chalk, which disappears with the rain, and, and I could have used spray paint. I could have done what Banksy does. If I'd done what Banksy does, I'd actually have more artwork in more towns than Banksy does, but I used chalk. And I've stood there and I've watched it get washed away. It just vanishes with the weather. Uh, these particular poems, um, they were written in other towns originally, I think. Uh, poems tend to evolve over the space of a tour. So some of the old ones work their way out and new ones appear in their place. Um, but these ones here, I've not shown them to Gloucester yet. So. Sometimes I find it, it sort of helps when I turn up to, to get down something that the locals haven't seen, but which I've written in another town. And then it sort of just gives me more time to sit there and play with ideas, really. I can only go by people's reactions when they're reading my poems. I've had people move from one crying to another laughing. It's two completely opposite emotions that my poetry somehow is drawn out of them. But to me, that tells me I'm doing my job perfectly because I'm tapping in to something. I'm not there to tell the person what the poem means. I don't even attempt to. They just read the poem and draw their own meaning, their own conclusion from it. For whatever reason, that strikes a chord that draws out the emotion. The emotion could be anything. It's ultimately a question of what they take from it. Patches of cloud floating by to reveal a clear blue sky. People slowly pacing past with gusts of wind which blow and blast. Confused faces as they see my chalky verse upon the streets. Conversations quick to pass with moments which seems never last. I've travelled long, I've travelled far, across the sea beneath the stars. I've seemed along without a care, way up above, up in the air. I've walked for miles on my feet, where rivers flow and forests meet. 
those rugged hills and valleys deep sat screaming welcome home at me. It's made me more accepting of others. I think I was a bit more intolerant before. Um, it's broadened my horizon. It's made me a fuller person, I think. I've not just lived my life with a limited world view. I had done up until a certain point. Then I smashed the clock and got lost and, and everything changed. It was a sort of accumulative effect from that. I just want to get my poetry to as many parts of the world as possible. I want to, want, want, want to, I don't know, sort of live as rich an experience as I can. Not necessarily rich in, in a monetary sense, but, but rich in terms of experience. You can, you can have experiences that no one can ever put a price on. That's life. Smash the clock, get lost. In my